everybody. We thought we'd do a supercharged reunited. I think that's what we're gonna kind of have it's to not, call it. It's not quite live, but it's almost live. It's almost live. Yeah, we we figured that home internet connections, things could go a bit weird, and we rather you were actually entertained and interested in what we actually tried to cover in this session. So we thought, well. We'll just get it down. We're going to be actually live uh, in the chat as this. We're going to do this as a YouTube premiere. So do chat away. We will be in there. We'll discuss things with you as so they come out of the video. Future selves, or I guess it will be present selves at the time, watching our past selves, but chatting with your current selves. Why are you making this complicated? Why do you make it so complicated? Right. So let's talk about what we're going to do today. So I'm going to act as kind of uh, the eyes and the the watching on as you attempt. <laughs> For the first time, to make yeah. a change in Chrome DevTools. So, if yeah. you've never come across Chrome DevTools, uh, it's a tool that a lot of people <laughs> use. I mean, if what you are you doing here if you've never used Chrome DevTools? Uh, and yet, at the same time, I don't want to assume. So, if you haven't sure. and you're brand new to, like that's what it is. It's the developer toolings in Chrome, and this is Serma's first attempt to actually patch something in to Chrome DevTools. So, we have uh, a bug that we identified earlier as, yeah. as like a good candidate. And Probably, yeah. to be clear, you, you've, so you've never done this before, right? So you've never made no, a change. No, so to I definitely. just recently did my very first commit to Chrome, which also was a very, very tiny change, but it was so tiny that I could focus on all the other scaffolding around it. And that was very exciting. And I think it's only been a recent change that DevTools is now its own little repository, its own project, which okay. actually makes it way easier to contribute to. And I think... That's actually what you've been working on for a couple of months now, the whole breaking out DevTools in its own thing, making it more approachable for developers. And so now you actually get to show me the yeah, yeah. So, of your work. So the, yeah, you're right. The DevTools repo is actually a separate repo to the Chromium one. It's part of the Chromium kind of... Uh, umbrella. Uh, umbrella, yeah. It's, a part of the, it's still a Chromium project, but um, yeah. yes, it has its own separate repo. So it gets rolled into Chromium uh, every so often, every few hours, I think it is. Um, and that's how we, we we develop it. So it has its own pipeline for getting changes in, which is very similar to changes in Chromium. But anyway, we'll get to that. Now, you can actually see actually on your screen, if I'm seeing this correctly, this is the, the repo uh, yeah. that you clone. Uh, and and this, in, this is not an internal URL. Like This is out in the public for everyone. Everyone can clone this. Everyone can, can work on this. And that's kind of what we wanted to show today, that apparently, if I can contribute to DevTools, so can you. I mean, technically, and this is your second commit because you can see I mean, actually there, there's, a, there's a cheeky commit. We did want to make sure that it works before we yeah. go out with yeah. big fanfare, and then it doesn't work. So I made a very <laughs> important changes to a file called White Spaces where I added my name. All right. So getting this, so if you were going to do this for yourself, and uh, this is something that you've already done already, you've been through this uh, readme to go and grab the source code. Yeah. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit, um, so that's there's... the workflow section. Yeah, um, which if you're going to build Chromium, uh, you can absolutely do this. We won't be building Chromium today because it takes a long time to build. Um, and it's not actually strictly necessary for no. the changes that we're going to make today. So we'll, again, we'll, I guess we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so one thing you will have to do is like set up depot tools, which is like a little wrap around Git and some other stuff to give you the commands that the Chromium team uses to work on both Chromium and on DevTools. Um, it's literally just like a folder that you put somewhere and that's it. It's not very complicated. No. Um, and you then clone, you, you, cl you clone it and add it to your path, basically. Is the, yeah, that, pretty that's much. Some... And then you follow follow this readme. Like it's very well explained, um, and I it worked first try for me, and I didn't do anything special. And so in the end, once you do this command, you suddenly have all the source code for DevTools on yeah. your local hard disk, just like I have in this terminal. There we are. Okay, so that you're starting from exactly that checkout point. So the first thing it's probably worth doing um, is just checking that we can actually run your your own build of or your own instance of the front end, the DevTools front end, uh, right. from a copy of Chromium. So what we do is when you run, uh, there's a command called gclient sync, which is part of the depot tool. So if you run gclient sync, this gets any dependencies of DevTools. And one of those is a pinned version of Chromium. So you see, that yes. you probably didn't see it there, but one of the, the hooks was um, download Chrome Mac. Uh, it takes longer on the first time because yeah. I already ran gclient sync yesterday and saw the binaries already there. But, but now if you look inside, say, the third party folder, uh, you should okay. see third party, there's Chrome. 
in there. Yes, there is. And then you could you be able to run Chrome Mac, and then it's Chromium the app. Oh, so that's know. just just like as if it was installed in my applications. Yeah, yeah. So I can so, just do a Chrome content Mac OS Chromium. Chromium. There we go. Yeah. And so if, if you I run, run that, that, boom, fresh Chrome. No. Yeah. So if you if you then if you go to uh, Chrome colon version. Yeah, you're going to see this. This is the build, uh, you know, the revision and the Chromium yeah. 83. So this is a recent build of of Chromium. Yeah. So this, if you were to open DevTools in this, you'd actually see the bundled version of Chromium that came with that particular build. And what we want to do is we want to reroute uh, the DevTools so that it loads from your local file system, and we can do that. So if you quit out of this version of Chromium, All right, let's let's close this version. Um, I'm going to go back to the top level folder and okay continue so Sorry. yeah so you, you you do like dot slash third party chrome chrome mac and Thank just you. get yourself all the way back to that uh, binary yes okay now we add a flag and the flag is dash dash custom dash dev tools dash front end dev tools front end i'm going to go full screen so we can see the entire yeah and then line. equals and then you you have to include the file protocol so it's file colon slash slash okay and then now you do the, the absolute path to your folders, so whatever it is, it's like slash. Users, oh, so it slash. would be like users, Surma, source. You can see my path here. I'm going to do a little trick then and just go Bip, my current directory. Uh, yeah, and then uh, it'll be is front it? underscore end. All yeah. right. And I don't, know if you need the training. I don't know if you need the trailing slash. We'll find out. Um, now, we're not going to notice any difference if we get this right. No, it's, it's, it's just DevTools, isn't it? Yeah. So. so the thing to do, let's if you go to the code, so if you boot up the source code, like your VS okay. Code or whatever. Close this. I have VS Code open here. Yeah. Uh, if you just do a search for uh, elementspanel.js. So this is the JavaScript that uh, backs the, uh, the elements panel. And we, I should have said, uh, the DevTools front end is just a web app. I say just a web app. It's a web app. It's, um, it's a web app. It, it's a it's complex a, one, but it's, it's a web a, app. It's a very, very large, uh, long-running web app uh, that's had loads of uh, time to mature and so on. But nonetheless, it is a web app. And so if you're comfortable with JavaScript, uh, you could theoretically work on. <laughs> you could. It you might could. still be a bit overwhelming, because I'm certainly overwhelmed right now. Yeah. So after that super call for the elements panel, let's just like console.log something. I'm just like. Why after the super call, Paul? I could do it before. Uh, I thought you had to do a super call as the first thing. No, you can only you can do super later. You just cannot access this before oh, the there super you go. call. There you go. So let's let's put a typical console log debugging is still right. state of the art. So now, if you have you got the Chromium build open that you had? Uh, oh no, I closed it. I thought okay. So you didn't actually have to. So you don't have to do that. So we don't have to uh, build or anything. Don't we have to like build? No, once, in this particular mode, we don't because we just reroute all requests through here. Oh, that is neat. So now you've got dev tools. Now, if you, if it's docked to the right, you can't do this. But when it's undocked, like you currently mm -hmm. have it, yes. you can hit you can inspect dev tools with dev tools. So you hit you hit command con, uh, command. I. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Inspect. All right. So let's do this slowly. This is probably a tricky part. Go away. I often open dev tools with command alt i. It's just open dev tools. But since DevTools itself is a Chrome window and just a web, we can inspect DevTools itself with the same command. So mm. now we have two DevTools. Right. And you can so, see these are the logs from that DevTools. Yes, exactly. So the DevTools on the right is the one that's inspecting the page. And the DevTools yes. on the left is inspecting the DevTools on the right. Now, and that, that might cause your head to kind of mm, go weird. It's inception, uh, isn't it? Yeah. But if you click on the Elements panel on the right-hand one now, on, on the, the right, right hand, hand. Oh. yep, yep. Hey, we changed you, the thing. We changed can, the thing. Can, so we, can, can we ship this to Prod? Because I think this is a really good change. No. Okay, Although, fine. I so to be clear, actually, this we're going to fix a bug today. And the bug, I am going to approve the bug, uh, the fix on my side, because I'll be watching Surma, and I am comfortable that, <laughs> that he, you know, we're going to get to a good solution. So I'll be able to approve it. You we will regret that. that statement. Yes. Let's see how we get on, actually. Uh, let's not commit to too much too soon. Um, Should right, we look so, at the bug? Yeah, so the bug uh, is... Do you know the uh, ID? CRbug.com? No, I don't know. Let me find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, thought you'd knew, I thought you knew it. Unbelievable. I, I, I remember I, we looked at it earlier, but I forgot ever since. 
Okay, so the bug ID is crbug.com slash. <laughs> waiting for it to load. Is 1024721. Now, this particular bug is an interesting one uh, because it's saying that the payload size in our show more tooltips is double the correct value. So let's go to okay. the dev. Let's go to the dev tools and uh, yeah, like in the console. Let's do something where we would force uh, the show more. So this is this would happen if we had something like an object or a mm -hmm. string. Actually, a, a string would do it by itself. That is too long for us to just show in the console. What we do is we truncate it and we add a show more button. So like yeah. Okay, so we dot. make it really long. So let's make it like one megabyte long. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, try it. Okay. Oh, it says yes. that that's the thing. It says two megabyte. Yeah. So what you did, if you just bring that command back that you just had, you created, by the looks of this, you created essentially uh, one megabyte of data and our show more. I would assume so. Yeah. Is showing two megs. So that's the bug. Uh, the question is, is first of all, is that a valid bug? Is that is actually it a bug? A, is it a bug? Uh, my understanding was that uh we the javascript characters would oh this is about long. string encodings isn't it because I so. so i mean in 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 normal in normal land i almost said like if you use ascii encoding or utf8 encoding these characters are all one byte right it's so if you do, but, yeah because if you do dot, dot length that's just going to say one so why yeah. is it? Why, why is that not just one byte? Or is that one so, byte? That's one byte, right? So I think JavaScript is standardized to use UTF sixteen under the hood, which means that the 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 underlying byte representation of the string is one character long, but the byte length is actually two because each character has two bytes. Okay. Well, in order to figure out what's going on, we need to go and find where this is happening in the source code to figure out what it's actually yeah. doing and then we can actually see whether it's doing How the right would thing. I go about that. Yeah, that's this is always the most interesting part is to kind of go, okay, what is what is this thing that I'm even looking at? So you can actually because you've got you've got DevTools with DevTools. So we'll actually start there. If you use yeah. the the arrow in the you know the um this one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the arrow in the box. That's like. Oh, that's By the way, I, I love using command. So as it says here, you have a command shift C is the shortcut. So you can just click here, go command shift C, and then. Yeah. So if you highlight or, the show more two point one meg. Oh, it's, I need to do it here. Yeah, exactly. Can I get to the show more button? I don't know. Let's just click on that one for now. Uh, I think I broke it. Oh, yes, there it is. Okay, boom. We have found a button. Let me. Um, Make a bit more room. Okay. Yeah. So there's nothing in that particular class that makes me think, oh, yeah, I know exactly which part of the dev but, tools. But we could look at event listeners, right? Like which uh, object yeah. property section.js. Yeah. So th that would be where I would have assumed we were going to end up. So to, yeah, if, I guess if you switch across the VS code, go find that object property section.js and then we can talk about Let's what that is. Let's go there. Object property section.js. So That's yeah, you, I mean, in the same way as you do normal, I guess, uh, forensics work to try and figure out if you're looking at any other web app, like what part of the code is this? Yeah, exactly I the mean, same kind of deal here, really. This app is quite big, so I basically assume you go in blind every now and then and just have to do the usual detective work. Um, yeah, I mean, what, like anything, once you get used to looking around a certain code base, you kind of get a sense of much. where things probably they're probably going to live. But I know, so the object properties section is. Uh, the DevTools way of when we get given an object to render to the DevTools UI, uh, the object property section is the thing that uh, does that for us. So it cre creates a tree because uh, you can expand and collapse the properties right, and so yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And then within that, there are the various types. So we might be showing uh, a number or an array or even another object because they can be nested, or we could be showing uh, strings. So there'll be one that's actually dedicated to showing strings. So I guess we just, if you want to hit Command K zero for a second. Yeah, should, it, right? Command K know. zero. You have Key to hold Command K, Command K, and then ah. there you go. That will collapse everything. So if oh, we have our- Oh, handy. 
Yeah, so that's one handy thing from VS Code that I loved. Is like if you get a big file with lots of stuff in it, and for us Dev Tools files look, are often look, quite look large. Look this now. I can scroll through it in like two screens. <laughs> the other thing that's really useful is going back when you're kind of control clicking or command clicking around the place, and yeah. you're like, I got lost. I need to go back to where I was before. Uh, command control. zero. I command minus. Right. It's con control yeah, minus. Control minus. I think uh -huh. is what it does. So. Um, Okay, so I see the one at the bottom there, line 1634, expandable text property value. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Because it, well, exactly, it is because it's our expandable text property value. Yeah, so, it, it, it's a good name. It's very descriptive. Okay, yeah. should we unfold this a bit? Yeah, yeah. unfold this can one. I, and let's let's go and see if we can figure out. Um, can I unfold all of this somehow? Is there also a shortcut for that? Uh, it's K1, I think. Command K1. Okay, so I'm going to. Ah, okay. Go here, command K1. Maybe not. Maybe not. All right, I'm just going to do manually. Why not? We don't, don't care know. about comments. Who needs comments? Who who needs comments? Right. I can see it already, dude. Oh, <laughs> this. Ah. OK. Ah. OK. So there's a bit okay. to explain. Oh, there's definitely something to explain here. Firstly, uh, number dot bytes to string. So you might be looking at this. If you're familiar with your JavaScript, you might be thinking, I don't remember there being a bytes to string. Uh, we have some utility functions that are currently hooked off uh, prototypes in uh, the DevTools code base. We're actually working to remove those right now. So move I them to say more because like... that's not a best practice, is it? You're right, it's not <laughs> a best practice. With the uh, yeah, exactly. So that's why we're trying to uh, move those to, the, to make those self-contained functions. So you'd have like a bytes to string that takes a number and uh, and then returns you back. It doesn't need to live on the number. So th uh, I guess that does the whole thing. Where it also adds a, a suffix for the units, does it do that, or is it just yes. like turning? Yeah, yeah, okay. it does. It uh, if you actually look at the implementation. In fact, if you just uh, I can't try to remember where it is. F twelve, right? It, you try it. I mean, oh. uh, yeah, because no. it, it can't find it because it doesn't know where. Oh, it's a different find. number, of course. But if you yeah. like, command shift F and look for bytes to string um, and bytes we, to string. Yeah, uh, let's go down. Keep going. Keep going. Are we looking for something like? Timeline UI, you don't no, mean? keep going, keep going. It's not in there. It, it, I'm at the bottom already. That's oh, okay. Uh, I must have missed it somewhere. I would assume it would be like a number JS or something, but that doesn't seem no. to be the case. No, uh, don't do the open paren on the end of your search. Sorry, oh. I didn't notice that. Oh, it could be an equal thing, of course. No, I just assumed there would be a parentheses, but it doesn't no. have to be. I think it should be in common. Uh, is this alphabetically? No. Okay. This is fun. I'm trying to go find it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can find it for myself on my side. I'm gonna. I think I might have to increase the space here a little bit to see a bit more. Um, ah, bytes to string equals functions. That sounds. Oh, that's wasm parser. It's, it's, that's, it's that's in common. Right. It's in common. Uh, oh no, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, man. Woo. So it's in WASM. There is one in WASM parser, but I'm guessing that's not the one we're looking for. Correct. It is not. Ah, UI utils. UI utils. Yeah, I was just literally about to say that to you. OK, we can see the implementation of what that's actually doing, which is kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, if the number of bytes is less than 1,000, that's how we do it. So this common UI UI string, again, is like a, a formatter right. that we have internally. Uh, so we have lots of helpers to do lots of different things. Um, I see. But okay, you, but fairly you, straightforward. You, you can see if you've done any string formatting in the past, you'd recognize this kind of formatting style, I think. Um, the yeah. non breaking space and, and bytes and then the right suffix. Anyway, the point here, though, is that line one, six, five, one. This one. Take, take the text length and multiply it by two. Right. Now, now I'm wondering, it is definitely unexpected, but is it wrong? Because. Well, yeah, it, it must be wrong because, like, like, when you did that example before, the exclamation mark was one byte, right? So it can't yeah. be. So it can't. That can't be right to have. Well, it, no, no, it was length one. It was. It was a, a string of length one. It has one character. That doesn't necessarily mean how many bytes it consumes because you can encode the same string in many, many different ways. So that's there's, you know, true. So what's the assumption that is this? Is, so, this is assuming two bytes per. Per character, pretty then. much, pretty much, and that is 
But that's not that's not always going to be the case, right? I mean, most it, things. It, right. It, I know, I want help. I want help. Yeah. Because uh, shall we me- summon the only person who comes to mind for me when there is questions about JavaScript standards and text encoding? Who are you thinking? The Binance. The Matthias. Oh yeah, Matthias, Matthias, Matthias. Let me yeah. see if he is free. Uh, okay. Can you join? We need your help. <laughs> I'm gonna put our our Hangouts call he, on the main screen now. So because he, if if the Matthias joins us, he says he's yeah he says he can, which is good. Yes, uh, good. Oh good. hey, how are you doing? Hello. Right, how's we, it going? What's <laughs> happening? Uh, we're we're doing a video and we are discussing um, a bug where. DevTools currently reports a number for the length of a string that looks like twice the number of characters. And we were yeah. discussing bytes. And the, I'm confused. Oh. Um, and we suggest, well, Sermon suggested that you were the rest, right person to bring in and ask. So can we show, Terma, do you actually, can you show your screen just so we can show Matthias what we're actually uh, looking at? Yes, I can. Thank you, by the way. Share my entire yeah, screen. No Ladies it's and gentlemen. This screen. It's Matthias Binans. If you don't know Matthias, uh, he works with me on DevTools, uh, former DevRel. Here we go. So this is the line that Summer is now isolating for you. Okay, guys, <laughs> can, you, can, can, you, can you show him? Just, just show him Which your... Which line is it again? Yeah, which, yeah. Could you show him your the console though, just for a split second? Ah, the console log, that is this one. All right, right. so what I did here is... Whoa. Ah, sorry. So what I did here is I t- create a string that has one million exclamation marks, which so, my intuition was like, that is exactly one megabytes of text. DevTools, however, tells us 2.1 megabytes. And that is a bug that has been reported. And now that we have dug down to where, how this is being calculated, it is definitely unexpected, but is it wrong? Yeah, so that, that's my mm-hmm. question. So like, if you go back to that, that one line of JavaScript, uh, Total bytes is, we were just talking about bytes to string is just, I mean, that's a nice little side thing about the fact that we take the number, but the fact that we got two times text dot length seems to me to assume two bytes per character and that seems wrong. Uh, well, I guess it, it all depends on what the intention of this code is at the time it was written. Um, so clearly the number of bytes that you get for a certain string depends on the kind of encoding that you're using to encode that string in right. the first place. Like the same string, the same input could produce, I don't know, 34 bytes in UTF-8 and then another number of bytes in UTF-16 or in UTF-32 or in any other encoding you come up with. <laughs> so um, it, this code looks a little funny at first, but I think this might be correct for UTF-8. 16. Okay. Right. And but, that's what JavaScript uses, right? Or JavaScript is standardized to expose strings to the developers in UTF-16. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, this is, I mean, th- there's lots of background here that we probably shouldn't get into right now, <laughs> but uh, people might have seen this thing before where you, you take, it, it happens a lot with emoji. A lot of emoji, uh, emoji have this property where you add them to a string, and then you get the length of that string, and the length will be two let's, instead of one. Let's let's show that because that's something. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. So if we to, you, take a string, well, we're and, gonna need to see your screen again, buddy. Uh, yes. Hang on. I'm recording that, but you can see it. So that's funny. I'll do that again. Give me a second. So I'm gonna share my screen again. This one, and I'm gonna do this again and hide this one. All right, right, so because what you can do, if you want to have a string that has, for example, the poop emoji, that is all perfectly fine. However, make make, make it bigger, make it bigger. Make make it, we want to have this in really big. There we go, nice and visual. However, if you take that string and you look at the length, it says two, which means it has two characters, which it does not. It's clearly just one poop emoji. But it could be two characters, but four bytes or eight bytes, or presumably depending on the encoding of what you've actually got here. Well, so that, that's, I guess, yeah, Matthias. Right. So the, the JavaScript string length is not directly related to any kind of encoding, or at least it doesn't directly correspond to the number of bytes in any particular encoding. 
Oh, okay. I, and, and that's why you have this little formula here. Like you, you take the string length, you double it, which happens to match what happens for UTF-16. Because for UTF-16, there, there's this concept of a code unit, which is like the word size for a certain encoding uses, the smallest mm -hmm. logical unit that is that makes up the part of the encoding. And so for UTF-16, every Unicode character, well, let's, let's say it like this. A lot of Unicode characters, they correspond to one code unit in UTF-16. They can be encoded in one code unit. And each code unit is 16 yeah. bits. Everything That's up to called... 16 bits, right? So to six, yes. the first 65,000 characters yes. in Unicode should just exactly. easily fit into two bytes. But I... there's lots of other Unicode characters, over a million actually, that do not fit in just one 16-bit code unit. And the problem right. there is that you need to represent them somehow. So the way this works in UTF-16 is that instead of using one code unit, you use two. And then during decoding, you combine <sighs> those back together. Okay. These okay. are surrogate pairs. I, I, I cannot be the only one for whom this is unintuitive and a little bit bonkers. <laughs> um, so I'm glad, first of all, I'm glad Surma understands. And I'm glad you understand. Uh, I'm going to represent everybody else who's going, uh, I understood some of the words that you used uh, broadly, maybe. Um, it, how, is, there a, is there a blog post? I've, I have a feeling you have a blog post that at least covers some of this. There, there is a, I can send you a blog post okay. later uh, in which case, that covers all of this. I will check that in the, the show notes. For now, my understanding is that UTF-8 is the common, like whenever you do node work, uh, like, and you're reading from a file or whatever, it's always UTF-8. Yeah. So it feels like this is defaulting to UTF-16, whereas UTF-8 would be, would be nearer what a developer would most likely be encoding yeah. in, and therefore is much more, it may not be perfect, because if they are working in UTF-16, this would be now would be wrong, but a more mainstream encoding would be to use UTF-8. So we need to find a way of calculating the bytes assuming at least or probably going towards a UTF-8 encoding and see what that actually gets us. Is that a fair? Yeah. OK. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Although, I mean, currently, it's it's apparently using UTF-16. And I don't know what the reason was for that. If I had to guess, it's because DOM strings, like every string in the DOM, and like Surma said, JavaScript strings, they kind of use UTF-16 to some degree. <laughs> I like you just that, go kind of. Uh, <laughs> it's complicated. You don't want to know. OK. But since you 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 know uh, perhaps a little bit more about this than we do, if we were to ship this instead of going two times the the text length, if we were to ask for its byte length based on a UTF-8 encoding, and ask for, that would seem like a more reasonable approximation. I, I in general, I think UTF-8 is a more sensible default than UTF-16, especially for something like DevTools where you might be inspecting. A network request where yeah. I mean it's definitely a best practice to use UTF-8 to serve your HTML, CSS, JavaScript resources. So it would be weird to send it in UTF-8 and then look in DevTools and then suddenly you see a byte size in UTF-16. It's also without we have it the, being mentioned. We have the copy button. So if you copied that string in your editor and saved it as a file, there is like a 99% chance it will save it as UTF-8. So I think UTF-8 is pretty much the predominant encoding on most platforms. And so I think it's nobody would argue with us defaulting to UTF-8. All right. In which case, that is, I think, our path forward. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, I mean, you're welcome to stick around or you're welcome to leave, whichever you like. Uh, and I, if you send me that blog post, I'll chuck it in the show notes. Yes, uh, and will do. Again, thank you, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. See you later. You it. See ya. See ya. Right. OK, so we have <laughs> Whoa, it was such a simple bug. And now it's gone into text encoding. And I am uh, glad. <sighs> I'm glad we got that. OK. Yes. Um, all right, back to the code we go. Let me undo all my, uh, because you probably don't want to have these empty lines in your CL later no, on. I, no, all I, right. would not, I would not LGTM that one. So in case anybody's wondering, LGTM is a shorthand that we use, uh, which means looks good to me. And it's the uh, the LGTM is like a plus one. It's a, it's a, it's you're good to go. Um, so when I say I wouldn't LGTM, it means I would not say that it looks good to me. Um, so the plan is to get to an LGTM, which we will do because I'm watching Surma code this. Anyway. <laughs> OK, so we can comment this out because we know this doesn't do the right thing. We want to write something new. So usually what I would do is I would do something like new response text array buffer 
Yeah. And we have to have to await that because it's asynchronous, which is good, and then do byte length. But you that's, can't. You can't because constructors is not async, so you're not. Allowed I to do know. That anyway. I know. But I guess even if it was an async function, you wouldn't approve it right, because uh, this is, <laughs> let's do let's do the proper way. So well, there's, the proper there's blob way as well. We can do a blob, right? That's one way of doing uh, it. No, because if so, new blob would work in a similar way. We would do new blob like this. However, it's also asynchronous. Is it? So yeah. No. Yes. Promise no. array buffer. Oh. Well, you don't it's have to async. get an array buffer. You can just ask for the dot length or the dot size. You but, can. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So I guess what we could do uh, is uh, size. There you go. So that that should get us the well. Why don't, since you've gone that that route, let's just try that because you can. So if you go back to the Chromium and you don't need to restart it here. So this is where I you have to get it right. Right. So on the the right hand side, which is the one that's the kind of correct one, the one that's actually inspecting the page, yeah, or like that. Not the Dev Tools mm -hmm. on Dev Tools. Right. If you hit Alt R or Option R on Mac or whatever. That will reboot, oh, it reloads. Reloads Dev Tools, and then you can inspect Dev Tools with Dev Tools if you want. But we could just try well, your yeah. You could just so try we're your just going to do th this thing again because we still have it here. No, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted the one this one. Yes. Ooh, I don't know why I didn't format it correctly. Oh, because you know why I didn't format it because we didn't I didn't wrap it in call... the... Yeah, let's fix but that. We but we know that the number is now. So you it's can roughly a megabyte, which is exactly what we want to see here. Okay. So we would just basically do the same thing that they did. Do number uh, bytes to string. Uh, do another reload. There we go. 1.0 megabytes. Boom. Love it. Okay. I. It feels weird to me to create a yeah. blob. Um, it, yeah, because also blobs might get persisted to disk because that's the point of blobs. You can store blobs and files. And so that that just seems not like a good idea. What you usually do when you do text encoding is to use a data structure called text encoder shock. So what we're going to do is encoder new text encoder, right? This. And then yep. what we can do. We can encode the string. So text encoder only has support for one encoding, which is UTF-8. So really? I think there used to be plans for more encodings, uh, oh. but just basically it ignores any parameters you give it. It just gives you a UTF-8 encoder. Yeah, that's so, a nice a nice feature of this would be if we could uh, parameterize the encoding, and then if we knew that somebody was working with UTF-16 yeah. to show them the bytes based on whatever the encoding should be. But okay, that would be let's... nice. But currently, for now, let's 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 platform onto UTF-8 because that's pretty much the channel on the web, as Matthias said anyway. So encoder dot encode typing. I feel like hard. you've been. To, I feel like you've been to my school of typing today. Yeah, it's it's. I'm, I'm... <laughs> so encode dot encode, and you give it a string, and the string is called. I forgot what it's called now. Text. That's. I could have guessed that. So this is now the text, the string, in whatever the engine uses internally, encoded into a buffer containing the UTF-8 sequence so for had, that string. So do we want buffer.length then, presumably? Buffer.byte uh, length is what I would use. Um, yeah, because this is a buffer. Oh, it's a unit 8 array, which is a view onto a buffer. And the byte length gives you the number of bytes, which is what we're looking for. And now we format that for the total number of bytes. OK. That OK, check check it out. We're going to reload DevTools once again. And it's still working. Boom. OK, Good. that is that is the fix for this then. So if you can delete that line 1651. Delete the old line. OK, Save that. delete it. OK, so let's have a look. What uh, you need to uh, you can close that. So let's, what, we're now, what we're now going to do is we're actually going to make the patch uh, on the DevTools uh, repo side. You actually have two changes by the look of your VS code, which probably means that change that you made to the elements panel is still. Oh, that's still in there, isn't it? Yeah. Let, let's 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 remove that because so we definitely don't want to. Yeah, one oh, change to one. That's our diff. Brilliant. Okay, so what we can do now is uh, we make a commit with that in. Okay. So the way to do that, yeah, just do what you do what you feel like doing there. So uh, fixes. Uh, yeah. What what was it called? Elements. Uh, I can't no, remember. That's the wrong file. Uh, expandable text property. You know what? Copy. You're lazy. Boom. No, it's the right thing to do. Make 
yeah. I sign my commits. Of course you do. That's yeah, absolutely great. Um, <laughs> so- now what we need to do is we need to upload the code for code review. Um, which is a say, it's, okay. it's, going be, it's going to be fine because I've seen you code this today. Uh, but normally this would be like a, an independent process where um, you'd have somebody who's not seen the code look at it for the first yeah. time. So you've made your commit. So what we need to do is we need we to did. type git, git cl upload. And if you're used to git, you might be thinking, I don't remember there being a git cl. This is exactly the depot okay. tool stuff that we talked about earlier. This is adding a, oh. a, a, it's adding a wrapper to git um, or a, a, a load of utilities to git. Uh, and get CL. So CL is uh, short for change list. Uh, it's very similar to a PR on something like GitHub. And you see here, it's taken the uh, commit message that you have fixed size calculations in expandable text property value. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it's making it's going to make that the title of the uh, oh, okay. CL. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to uh, pop in the bug number from uh, Which the we have number. right here, luckily. So I can just copy paste that in yeah cool. and then we need yeah, now we need to add a description in uh to describe the change that we've made so i guess explain that we're going from utf16 historically oh or, okay it was the assumption of utf16 and this cl is going to bump us to using uh utf8 or assuming utf8 so previously the code calculated the size of the thing when using utf16 so you want to go to a new line because that yeah yeah i just saw there is this line here which tells right. you how long you can go okay yep. so we're going to line break there uh, same thing when using it as the encoding. However, oh, that's not how you spell that. UTF-8 is much more common on the web and for web development. So it makes more sense to use that. This CL... You've got a double makes, by the way. So it, so it makes, makes more sense to use oh. it. Well, look at you. Well spotted. This CL changes the size calculations to use UTF-8 instead. Great. Perfect. So if we save that. Um, save it. Yep. So what's going to happen now is the, um, the CL is going to get created on the upside, on the other side of the remote side. So we can do yep. uh, git CL web, and that's going to open up a, a link for code review. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's really handy. Uh, so there we there go. We go. There's a tab. OK, so uh, in order to make this work, you would need to be signed in, which you're not currently. Oh. So I guess you need, to, you need to switch across to your Chromium account. Yes, yeah, so I have a, a Chromium account. Do you need a Chromium account to contribute to this project? Or can I no, also I think do you that? Just need, I don't know. I actually don't know. Uh, I've never really considered it, because I do have a Chromium account just by nature yeah. of my work. So I actually don't know what the, the process is there. Uh, okay. However, we do have plenty of people who, who make code. Uh, OK. All right, so in this window, I'm logged in with my Great. Chrome account. It, otherwise, it pretty much looks the same. I mean, there's a bit more, let me switch back and forth, there's a bit more buttons going on, I think, because I'm logged in. Yeah. But other than that, this is the description I just wrote, right? It added a change ID thing to that. Cool. Yep. Um, so in, in terms of running through what we've got, yep, so you've got that. That's the file with the diff of what we've changed. Uh, so if you scroll back up now, uh, the kind of, I suppose the interesting parts are the things that are, are worth uh, discussing briefly. There's the actual ID, the two one three four two eight seven. It's in the top left hand corner. It says yes. it's a work. It says it's a work in progress. Um, there's a you in theory can code review plus one. It depends on your permissions whether you can do that or not. Uh, there's yep. a thing called CQ dry run, which you can see about two thirds of the way across. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a moment. Rebasing, finding okay. an owner, which is basically get me somebody who can uh, code review this for me in case you don't know who to ask. Uh, abandon the change, and then make some edits. So the thing to do now would be to add me as a reviewer. So if you go to uh, Add Reviewers or Add Reviewer on the left-hand side, uh, it'll okay. pop up a box, and you can choose huh. me. I'm the top person there for you. That That's is good. you. Uh, Anyone else? Is, no, it'll be fine for now. Just go with me. Start review. Look. OK, great. So I will now get go. notified that that you want to do uh, you want to do code review. Now, at this point, you can actually start running the tests. Uh, which is probably a good thing to do. So if you hit CQ dry run at the top. Okay. So CQ stands for Collect the commit, commit queue. And what commit queue does is it takes the this change from this change list, which as I say is very much like a PR. And um, ah, okay. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna join the back of the queue essentially. And we have if you scroll down a little bit, 
Mm -hmm. We have a thing called, you can see it says, Curtis says, no try jobs. That's about to change. We're about to see. Uh, there we <laughs> Literally go. as you say it. There you go. Uh, that's These are a bunch of uh, machines that are going to step through a load of tasks to do with testing, to do with linting, to do with uh, building and so on. They're just going to run okay. all in different environments with different configurations. And they're going to run through the source code of DevTools with your change applied. And if everything goes green at the end, that means mm -hmm. that everything has passed all the tests and everything's happy. So you can see it's gray for most of those. It means they are queued up. The yellow ones okay. mean that it's running. Green means it's going to be successful. And red would mean that we've had some kind of failure. So we obviously want green across the board. OK, now yes. you're, you're running this. In the background, I can approve the source code change. Yeah, it just it. showed up here. There is new messages on this change. That's yeah. exciting. Uh, ah, that's the commit bot. OK. Yeah, but also uh, the fact that it's trying the patch. So it's going to try and do that. So I can step in now. I will get an email that basically says uh, that you want <laughs> Does to this actually look good? Did Surma write decent code? Yeah, so I'm going to approve it. Normally, we'd go through the process of a, a proper code review, uh, and we would actually sort of discuss things that need to be discussed, exactly like, like you would on, say, something like GitHub or whatever. So that's exactly yeah. what we do, process we're going to go through. But today, because of the way we've done this, it's not a problem. Um, so now, if you were to uh, refresh this page, which you're perfectly free to do, um, it doesn't change anything if you see what I mean. You now hey. see the top. Yeah, you've got a code review plus one from me. And it also says that you're in the top left, that you are ready to submit. So that means at the end of the CQ dry oh. run, we would now be allowed, or you would now be allowed, to actually commit this code in. Now, if there's a problem, we can revert the code later on. So it's it's not a problem if we actually uh, encounter issues with this later on. It's it's ideal. It's not ideal, but yeah. it's also you know resolvable. So oh, we have go, the first first green test, yeah. basically. So well, if you scroll up for me, um, yeah. since we're already here, you can click the submit to CQ button. Uh, Despite the tests not being done yet. Yeah, it, all it does is if you see on the left hand side, it says commit queue plus one Surma. If you change that to submit to CQ, that should now change to being plus two. Ah. So what's going to happen now is at the end of the CQ dry run, it's actually a proper mm -hmm. C, it's now a proper CQ run because what at the dry run it would have gone through all these the tests that we discussed and then uh, it would stop and it would wait for you to actually hit the submit button. But now what we're going to do oh, is. Okay. By, by hitting the submit button, yeah, you can see that it's actually now rerunning those first two pre-submit ones. Um, and the other ones, I see. They're, they're already pending. They're already waiting. So we're just going to wait for those uh, to go yellow uh, and show that they're actually starting to do some work. I mean, we could just leave this. And um, you'll actually get an email at the end of this that tells you the outcome of uh, the run, whether it got submitted or whether there were any issues that prevented it from being submitted. So. That's kind of that. If you scroll down for me, the, the try jobs that, that, that were there. OK, so we've yeah. got uh, front end Win64 rel. Um, so the, the difference between some of these, uh, if we start on the left-hand side, DevTools, front end, Linux, which is the platform, Blink Light mm -hmm. rel and Blink rel, they're fairly, fairly similar. They are going to run tests from Chromium. So there's things called layout tests. And the layout okay. tests are, a, a, there's a suite of tests that run in Chromium to check that things are behaving as expected. There are some that relate to DevTools. And so those yeah. are the tests that are running on those machines. It seems fairly unlikely that a change in DevTools can break Blink. But I guess there is a situation that it might actually happen. We just want to be on the safe side. So right? when we, we talked earlier about how DevTools is now its own repository, it was yeah. historically in the same repository as Chromium. So it was more that the, those tests lived there. Currently, those tests still live there, but we run them, we pull them across, and we run them here. I understand. But okay. that's um, neither here nor there, I suppose, in some senses. It's not that you're going to break Blink. It's just that that's where they currently live. They live in the Chromium okay. repo um, for kind of historic reasons, I suppose. Uh, the ones that are still gray, uh, or the two middle ones that are gray, front-end Linux rel and front-end Mac rel um, and Win64 rel, they are uh, specific to the DevTools repo. And they're going to run things like our uh, unit tests, lint tests. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to type check with Clojure. Um, so we, we do use uh, uh, JS doc in extensively in, in inside the code base to yeah. uh, do typing. Um, but there is some use of TypeScript as well inside the code base. Um, so if you actually click on the front end Win64 rel, uh, the yellow block, that'll actually okay. allow us to see what that bot's currently working on. Uh, oh, cool. 
So you can scroll down this list. This is the list of all the things that it's currently doing. Most of these uh, don't really... Uh, Just set of, up the environment, don't they? Yeah, they, exactly. They, they're doing various things that you know they would do as part of running, so you see right at the top, running recipe and what the recipe mm -hmm. is. And you can get the standard out from each of those processes. So if you just refresh for us and scroll down, see what's there. And we're still in com compilation mode. Uh, eventually, we will see other tasks appear for things like unit testing and end-to-end -end testing, uh, which are slightly more interesting. I'll tell you what you can actually do while we're waiting for that to, to get to its point. You can actually run things like the unit tests for yourself locally on your machine. Now, as, as I would said, expect so, yeah. Yeah, but we're, I mean, we're running these on Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac, um, yeah, which means we get, we get much more coverage because you're running on Mac right now, yeah? So I am. So what you can do is you can do npm run unit test uh, from like the root this. of the repo. Yeah, and that will uh, compile the any. Tests ah, it's using to. the same Chrome binary that that we've been using for local development. Yes, so exactly. Handy. Yeah, so it means that we can uh, be certain that we I, we don't have to build Chromium, but we're also not using whatever the device. Chrome or Chromium is because there's somebody who might not actually have a, uh, an instance of Chrome or Chromium on their device if they're developing. Or extensions or any sort of things that could interfere, right? Exactly. So in order to make sure that we get a much more reliable environment, that's what we do here. Now it's triple, uh, quadruply compiling. It does do this occasionally, and I, I'm not sure I understand why. Um, there we go. It's now booting up, and you can see that it's running the tests. Cool. Okay, so, so this is one of the tasks that we would expect uh, the, the bots to do. So if you switch yeah. back. Uh, Let's to go back and see where it's at. See. It is done with compilation. Oh, so it's, it's, it's done, done with the unit test. So if you go to that, to the standard out there. To the standard out, okay. Yeah. That and looks familiar. Exactly. And you'll see that in, in its case, it actually has uh, coverage data. We actually can pull the coverage report if we need to. And we can we can do that locally too. Um, so it tells you which lines are uncovered. That's really cool. Yeah. Like so that. so we're, we're increasing test coverage um, daily. That's something that we're, we're you know, we're very committed to getting good test coverage on our machines. Uh, right. Or on our code, sorry. Um, so yeah, so exactly the things that you're in locally, we just run them remotely and some other bits and pieces besides. So now if you go uh, back, it was doing the lint check with ESLint. Uh, eventually. Ah, Linux. Linux is now booting. Mac will get there eventually. Um, yeah. So on the, uh, on the end of the, that recipe, when it's finished doing all those tasks, mm -hmm. hopefully, if everything's been fine and green all the way through, then that will now that block whole block will go green. And as I say, we want them all to go green. So with that all said, I guess because of the joy of editing, uh, we'll just jump to the point at which this is green. all hopefully is all green. So see ya. All right, and we are back. That means we are actually done. All these bots you can see now, these try jobs have gone green. Ah, and you can see at the bottom all of them. Says, all of them. And that's actually quite some time. We've been here uh, <laughs> quite a long period of I time. I want to say actually. half an hour or something. Yeah, it takes a something. while for these to run through. This is the slowest yeah. part of the process. Normally, um, to actually get the change in, you know, there's a lot of things that need to happen. Right. Now, the good news is because everything's gone green and because you'd hit the commit to the submit to CQ button, um, which, if you remember, was the commit queue went to plus two. That was up here. Uh, yeah. yeah. It should just be the case now that if you refresh the page, um, all, right. all things being well. Merged. Merged, top left-hand corner. Merged. Merged. So you've got your first proper change into DevTools. That's landed, uh, which means that eventually that would make its way into uh, Chrome DevTools. Uh, and hopefully that will also... Well, the other thing that you can do now is if you go to the bug itself... Um. So this one right here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you'll see at the bottom that you can see actually the, there's a, a it's not, oh, it's not come in yet, is it? Okay. Eventually there will, there'll be some data from the, 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 uh, CL that comes in here. Uh, but you can mark that bug now as fixed if you like. Ooh, um, I, I, I shall. So you, the I problem will. is, yeah, you're not signed in there yet, but okay, great. Um, and then you just All right. to mark. Let's go to the bottom. And I can go from available we to... Should have, yeah. Normally, you would have done that as started, actually. But was, we did it very quickly today. We're just so, so quick. Fixed. And then you can save that. And um, that will... There we go. That's exciting. So there will this 
this fix be in Canary in like tomorrow's Canary or something? I don't know how quickly it will land in Canary, but it will land fairly soon. Um, and yeah, the behavior will change and um, we should be good to go. Um, cool. Congratulations on getting your, your changes. Thank you very much. Thank you for your help. No worries. Now, obviously we've uh, done this small change today. Do uh, take a look at the DevTools uh, repo. We'll link that in the description below, uh, along with the link to Matthias's blog post. Thanks, Matthias. It's been lovely to see you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your helping us out. Um, and of course, it's been lovely to reunite with Surma again to do a little bit of Supercharged Reunited. Um, we hope you're all doing really well. We know it's challenging times for many of us at, the, at this point in uh, point in history. It's a very strange and different. <laughs> it is thing. a point in history, isn't it? It certainly is. A, it's a remarkable point in history, not necessarily a good remarkable, but it is one all the same. So we hope that this has given you a little bit of a uh, a peek behind the curtain, a bit of interesting insight into uh, what we well certainly what I do with my days, and now apparently what Sam is doing with his days as well. So I guess with that all said, we'll see you. On the flip side. On the flip side. <gasps> yes. See you then. See ya.